Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Robin McLaughlin and I am the Associate Alumni Director here at Northwood. Thank you for joining us today for our March Alumni Webinar, Crafting Your Hobbies into a Business with alumnus John Levy. If you have any questions during today's webinar, please use our Q&A feature to submit them. We will have time at the end of our discussion to answer any of those questions. John Levy is an NSU alumnus and serial entrepreneur, owning a variety of businesses from computers to distilleries. John began making spirits back in 2015 and his passion quickly grew from there. He and his business partners have been happily serving their mate and house spirits and beer at Three Bridges Distillery and Tap Room located in downtown Midland since March 2022. Thank you, John, for joining us today. Let's start with you telling us about your entrepreneurial journey. I think, I think you did a pretty good job right there. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a really good, uh, so, can you hear me? Gotcha. Yep. Okay. Just, okay. I just, right. You're good, John. Um, so there's a really good book called Whack on the Head. And what's great about it is it's a, it's story after story of people who have these great entrepreneurial ideas, but they're, for lack of better words, stuck in a job that's too comfortable for them to leave and take a, make a risk. And then something happens. They either lose their job, get laid off, company folds, something happens, and suddenly they're unemployed. And they go on to do what they dreamed of doing because they've been released from their cage. Um, it's a very inspiring book. And I feel that's the way I was. You know, I was working as a uh, pharmaceutical drug rep, cardiovascular, thinking, ah, oh, I've got all these ideas. I just want to do one of them. And then they laid off 10,000 people. And all I, what I heard that I'm like, I hope it's me. I hope it's me. Um, I wanted that push. I needed it. And nobody in my family had been an entrepreneur, at least in my, my close family, knit family. And so uh, uh, it was wonderful. I loved getting laid off and I took advantage of it. Um, started up computers to go and and then I started to realize and, and this is this a, may scare some of you but I hope it's inspiring um uh three weeks before I opened up computers to go literally just three weeks I had never loaded a hard drive never seen a hard drive never held a motherboard never seen inside a computer never loaded operating system removed a virus stole a computer never done anything like that um, but I knew people had a need for computers and I figured there's, I'll figure it out. Sometimes, uh, like a big ice bath, you jump in and you get that shock and then you're like, okay, adapt, adapt, figure it out, figure it out, learn to swim. Um, and that's just, I guess, the way I work. Not everybody functions that way. And I certainly can't recommend it other than to say, don't let your fears stop you. I mean, you fail every time. I know there's a, some great quotes around that and I'm not very quote worthy. But I do think people need to get that push. I was lucky enough to get laid off and get my push. I honestly don't know where. I think I would have done some small little side jobs, businesses. But I got to go big scale. And computers was an immediate hit. We were cash flow positive in three months. And we never looked back. Hindsight, I was in it for 14 and a half years. I sold uh, two and a half of the stores, half because one was starting up, the third was starting. Um, it was nice to be released uh, from computers to go, but to be honest, I probably could have left, sold it, got just as much out of it, and had less of the frustrations uh, that the computer world does offer. It's just it's a tough gig. Uh, never, never a, a dull moment. Changing constantly. Expectations sometimes ridiculous, but that's what you're there for. You're there to handle the ridiculous because that's what you're armed with. Well, hopefully. Um, anyway, sold it, and yeah, I've had this passion for uh, the, the the beverage industry, spirits, uh, beer, wine, and uh, it's funny, uh, Patrick over at Grove uh, Tea, I was helping him with computers. When he came, I came, I approached him, I said, hey, I know I'm here on computers, but I got this idea, I really want to make a go of it. Uh, you're an entrepreneur, what do you, do you know anybody? Thought about, thought about a couple days later, he introduced me to who is now one of my partners and the, uh, the master distiller, Kevin Thoreau. So that worked out to be, you know, communications, connections. I guess the other thing you can do is tell people what you need and you'd be amazed at how many people will tell, give you what you need. 
you don't even have to say, I need this, can you give it to me? Just tell them and just in conversation and then be open to the possibility that somebody may have an answer for you. Anyways, uh, long story short, well, long story long, it did go, uh, you know, reached out to several other people, brought people in. There's a team of five people that run the distillery and um, it's been wonderful. So that's kind of where my journey was. Um, now I will tell you the three bridges. Uh, last year, we learned a lot. Um, this year, we're looking to expand to a really nice outdoors, looking to sell bottles. We're canning, we're doing wine. We're gonna be expanding into party stores and restaurants. So it'll be a very different. I will tell you the other thing I learned as an entrepreneur is there's really three teams. The first team builds the business. The second team runs the business and it may not be the same people. It may not, you, you can't keep doing the same thing. Um, you built it, now you gotta run it. And then if you wanna grow it, you, it's not maybe diff a different team. It may be just the additional person or one person that was helping run it take a different, like, uh, different uh, uh, commitment to the company. So anyways, I will, uh, Josh, and I'm a serial entrepreneur, uh, capitalist pig as I joke. Um, I've got some inventions, some ideas, and things that I noodle with all the time. And if, if I found somebody that wanted to run with it, I'd probably finance it and say, go, let's do it. Just for the side, for just to be part of it, because there's such fun, uh, that creation moment, that explosion, that big bang of, bam, let's do it. Um, that that uh, dreaming and making a, a think become a real is, you know, I joke and just say, hold that thought. Well, you get to actually hold, physically hold the things you were thinking. So hold that thought's kind of a, a double for me. Anyways, I'll just I'll shut up and listen and answer questions if you have any. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Patrick is actually on and he said, hey, John, excited to have been um, play a small part in your journey with Three Bridges. It's fun supporting and cheering you on over the years. Oh, he's one of my favorite entrepreneurs. He's just got that, uh, you know, he's got the, 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 the great, he knows, how to, he knows how to run a business. He knows how to reach to the community. And he does, he puts community right up there in, in top of the, of the charts of what needs to be connected to. And the public responds to that. He really knows how to, and I, I think he genuinely does it because that's who he is. He's not just how you run a business. I think Patrick's just an, an all round, I'm, I'm part of the, the community guy, so. Yes, we're very lucky to have him as our director of our um, idea center. Oh yeah. Um, another question for you, knowing what you know now, is there anything you have done differently when you first started out? I would have started sooner. Uh, absolutely. I, uh, so I think as I talked about the different levels, I like my, so I, I, uh, I did a, a couple of presentations to some small groups one time. Um, and what I, the, my favorite presentation was actually, I took all the things that I felt needed to be done to start a business and to run a business and then grow a business. And I put all those down on paper. And then I broke them into four columns. I said, all right, here's the things. The things that are in column A are the things that I love to do and I know how to do. So that's column A, that's my, 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 my spot. Column B were the things that I want to do, but I don't know how to do and I need to learn them. Column C, and it went down to column D, was things I'm not good at and I don't wanna do. So the first thing I would do is maybe a pro have, I would, I think I love, Building the company, that's excitement, and then growing the company. Running it, mm, probably not my strength. There's things I can certainly be a part of, running stuff in the background. But now that we're starting to expand, I feel completely alive like it was in the very beginning because we're making deals and expanding and growing, and that part to me becomes the resurgence of excitement. Um, so I, I would probably, a, I would have gotten sold off computers to go after three or four years instead of 15, 14 and a half, 15 years. And I would have started the distillery uh, sooner and maybe discussed with the team, hey, I'm my strength is here, not so much here, but here. So in the middle area, we need to find things for me to do, learn to be comfortable um, and make my value to the company. But it you know, took less than a year, and now we're onto the flourishing side, and that'll be me for the rest of my life. I'm 50, almost 59, and I'm just having a ball. That's always a fun part. And um, we got to come down to Three Bridges on last week and try some of your delicious cocktails. What is oh, your favorite cocktail or creation and, like, the process of making it? 
So my favorite, I think we need to rename it because I think it doesn't get it tried as much, uh, but it's called uh, B55. Um, the the uh, B is for obviously bridges, but the, the B, uh, or I mean, uh, bridges, but the five, the first five was for the fifth month, May, and then fifth, Cinco de Mayo. It was our Cinco de Mayo drink. It is absolutely delightful. We, we candy, um, jalapeno slices, and then it's got cilantro and lime and mint and gin, and it is so wonderful. So that one, and we have a brand new one. I don't know the name of it, uh, but it is a cinnamon whiskey, which is a new launch of ours with a smoked orange peel, uh, peanut butter, and uh, orange juice, and it's just, I mean, if you know what you want, you can go to a bar and probably, if we go to any bar, we probably order, sadly, the same three things. We might experiment with different beers, but if we're a spirit drinker, we probably say, oh, gin and tonic, you know, old fashioned, we stick with those things. One of the things I do challenge people and I love is that we change up the menu and hopefully encouraging people to not get, for lack of better words, stuck in the rut. Let's experiment. Let me, let me borrow your liver, I tell them. Um, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, we had a question about the book um, that you mentioned before, and we think it's whack on the head. Oh, or, yeah. Okay. Is it by Roger Ocek? Is I, I, I read it probably 20 years ago. I have no okay. clue. But Dan I will tell you, it's you know, very you know, inspiring. Know. Two books that I will tell you that were very inspiring to me. That's one. And When Bad Things Happen to uh, Good People. Those two books, uh, that one I had to just because I'm thinking, you know, okay, all right, I, I – follow the rules, I do this, I do da, 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 da. I'm going to my head, and why is this happening to me? And it's like, okay, I have lessons to learn, or maybe I'm a pawn in somebody else's life and their, their life lesson, and I have to play, like, certainly there are people in my lessons to learn, maybe unfortunate to me to be in this situation, but maybe I'm helping somebody else learn a lesson, and maybe I can relearn or catch on to. But those two books really helped me just kind of settle my life down a little bit, you know. We had another question come in. Do you see more value in providing a product or a service, or do you just decide to take something you love to do it and monetize it? So I would say I, I like, I'll take the first, the last part first. Um, I always, I jokingly say, just because you make a good lasagna doesn't mean you should run, uh, open up an Italian restaurant. Um, it doesn't mean you shouldn't. I'm just saying it doesn't necessarily translate. I've seen some amazing breweries fail, not because they made bad beer, but they didn't run the business. It is a business. I mean, so, um, but I would say, you know, I, as, as a serial entrepreneur, do it. It's exciting. You'll hopefully you'll love it. Um, being a business owner isn't better and it's not worse. Um, it's just different and it feeds you or it doesn't. You take thrive on it or it eats you up alive. You need to find what makes, what allows you to sleep at night um, because it's different for everybody. Um, product or service, I really like manufacturing. Service is fun. Um, manufacturing brings on more competition because things can be manufactured anywhere in the world and delivered faster than you can do it. So the competition gets greater with the production, but then you also have the ability to be creative and then you also expand your horizon. At Computers to Go, I was serviced pretty much, so my demographics was within maybe a 15-mile radius of me, where if I have a product, I can sell it all over the world. So at Computers to Go, I had seven competitors. When, oh, got a dog too, sorry. <laughs> um, hang on, Finley. Um, so they're different. Services, uh, you can really carve out and say, all right, I got it with computers to go. I had seven competitors. That's all I had to be better than was seven people, seven businesses. Makes it easier to focus on who you're trying to beat. Um, product though, yeah, there's nothing like manufacturing. It's kind of when I watch the History Channel and I see, uh, I'm more likely to watch the production of the history of, of what made America so, of just the world, but I love the manufacturing side. Seeing an assembly plant, I mean, doesn't it blow you away when somebody invented the motherboard? That's amazing. But doesn't it also then amaze you that somebody made a machine that makes those motherboards mass production? That's incredible too. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna go with manufacturing. Long answer, sorry. Um, Jeff commented saying that the B55 is his favorite drink and he said it's so, so, so good. So I think everyone <laughs> should go there um, and try it. 
Um, Brian asks, what is, um, with the uptick in distilleries and microbrews, what do you believe differentiates your business? What was the last part of that? What do we do what? Um, with the uptick in distilleries um, and microbrews, what do you believe differentiates your business? So one of the things, a, a key difference between us and everybody is very rare is it that a company opens up with their distillery license, their brewery license, and their winery license. That's, that makes us immediately unique. It also made it much harder to get approved because the feds didn't understand, okay, in this 20 by 20 area, we're going to make this and then this and then this and they're overlaying and we share these things. And this. Yeah, it, it was a tougher sell to them. And so we had made some modifications to the back room to make that all um, accepted. Um, that ability allows us to make spirits, and then after we make a bourbon and take the and empty it out, I've got a bourbon barrel. Oh, let's make a beer, and we'll put the beer, and then we'll age it in the bourbon barrel. And oh, we got this red wine. We can put that in the beer, bourbon barrel, and we got a tequila. We can do the gin in the tequila barrel. There's, we don't make tequila yet. I'm just saying, <laughs> but the idea is to combine wines with whiskeys and to make a brandy and combine it. So there's just, I guess, the playground becomes that much greater. And I don't think a lot of places have that. And our master brewer, Jamie, I, when I first met him, I literally, I cold called him. I was like, hey, I'm looking for somebody. Oh, I do that. He was a home brewer of many years. And he came to the team and he brought three of his homemade beers and they were fantastic. But he had this incredibly curious, detailed, nerdy quality in him that because uh, if I can express one thing that's important to me, in business partners and in anybody who's going to be my friend and do anything, you have to be curious in life. You can't make somebody curious. You are or you aren't. Uh, if you're not, you can't read. You can't get a degree in curiosity. It's just you got that bug or not. And Jamie was so curious to try this and tweak this and play that. And I thought, you know, that's going to make us, that's going to put us on the map. That's going to make something that everybody's used to and we can change it and then repeat that if it goes well. And what if it doesn't? I, He's smart enough to know, you know what, that didn't come up where I thought it was, but I can use that to do this. If we make a bad batch of beer and we don't like it, we can distill it and turn it into vodka. And so the playground is huge, I guess, the best thing I can tell you. Thank you. We had another question come in. Um, tell us about what you do with ideas. Do you keep them to yourself or share them with others to get feedback? Oh, no. Collaboration is everything. I... Uh, uh, in fact, when I talk about business with people, it is never, if I tell you an idea or I tell you a story, by all means, I'm not wanting you to think I'm brilliant or great because I have ideas, so do you. I talk about them more. It doesn't make, mean I have more ideas, but there's something about, you can take the most complex product. If it's going to have end user, ultimately end user, you know, person on the street, you can pull them aside and tell them you're something. It's so complex that sometimes they will, by sharing it, they will say, yeah, but I don't, what, if, what is this? What is that? And it can make the, the creator double back and think, oh, you know, I thought that was obvious. I thought everybody would pick up on that. I thought that was the right color, the right. The collaboration is huge. It is literally the most important thing. No person is that brilliant. Uh, good example, Steve Jobs. He didn't invent hardly anything. But he was smart enough to bring people together, put them in rooms, and they, through collaboration, created some amazing products that we all use. And that's true with every business. Um, so, no, I'm, uh, you have to share your ideas is the short answer. You really have to. Sometimes you have to do it and you'll look foolish or you'll feel foolish, which means either A, they didn't get it, or B, um, sometimes, sadly to say, it's the messenger. Maybe you just didn't hit it off with them for whatever reason. And then I think that's one of the other things you need to do is sometimes remember, not everybody is going to like you. <laughs> um, there's 8 billion people on this earth. If you, uh, if you think you're right for everybody, you're wrong. And I think one of the things when you collaborate, you're more likely to find the people. So the more you share, the more your products get better. And maybe you'll do a service and help them with their ideas too. Thank you. All right, what are some of the biggest hurdles with both of your startups? Um, well, computers ago was zero hurdles because I didn't know what I was doing. I had no fear. Uh, I literally, like I said, I knew nothing about computers. I just jumped right in. 
I hired a kid who was brilliant, and I used to say his name was Aaron. I'd say, hey, Aaron, can I borrow your brain for a minute? I didn't want the customer to know I was still learning. <laughs> I don't want to show all my hands. Um, and uh, that was kind of our long-running joke. And then you learn it. You, you delve in. You get curious. You figure things out. And you become a valuable, more valuable to your company the more you do it. Um, Three Bridges was a rougher run because A, is the most heavily regulated industry I can think of. Um, it is, uh, and then during, we opened during COVID. And so the, it takes close to two years to get all the approvals done because it's not just the feds, then it's the state, and then it's the local, the city, the city attorney, the down, I mean, the city hall. I mean, there's just so many people and any one person can say, I've got a question, holds things up and it's a legit question, but you can't just go out and start selling shirts. You know, you, it, this is a regulated industry. Um, during COVID was certainly rougher. It was add, added 13 months to our wait period. And all the meanwhile, we had to pay rent, electrical, uh, all the water, the, the billing, the insurance. Um, yeah, we paid all the bills. And when they finally came along and said, hey, anybody who had COVID, we've got some money to help you out for what you went through. But you had to be in business the year prior. Well, we weren't. So we had all the luxury of the bills without any of the, the help out getting out of it. It's fine. It's part of our fabric. It's part of our story. Bitter while through it. Um, uh, all the sweeter now that we're past it. Uh, but yeah, that's those are some of the hurdles. You just can't let that stop you. Um, another question came in. What business relationships from your past career were you able to leverage in your new venture? Nobody. I hated everybody in the past. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, like I said, uh, Patrick was a good example. Um, he was from computers to go as a, as a customer, and then he became a friend and a referral to who was somebody who was my partner. Um, I jokingly say I probably have, you know, one or two friends and, and thousands of acquaintances. If I've talked to you once, I save that phone number because um, you never know when I'm going to need somebody to help me. I have questions. I reach out to people all the time, not as a weakness, but to, hey, sh I, got a, I got a question. And very often they simplify it for me. And I'm like, oh, God, I wish I was smart enough to apply that. Uh, I was smart enough to call you, though. Um, so I, 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 I kept my database. And I would say locally, certainly the people in the DDA downtown, I'm on the board now. And I, and I knew a lot of those people prior to. Yeah, you can never burn any bridges. Um, you shouldn't. It's, uh, even if you can build more, there's no reason to ever because you never know. Good advice. I'm um, another um, question came in. Any recommendations on funding a startup? On funding one? Have you said funding it? Yes. Okay. So uh, coming out of computers to go, I the advantage I had is I had I sold it, so I had money coming in for a couple of years. So I didn't have to worry about. So there's an unfair advantage. I had money coming in from the sale of a business. Um, a year and a half to take that back. Um, but then I needed some serious cash. This is an industry interesting, yeah, interesting industry. You don't say to the feds, I'd like to open up a distillery and a brewery and a winery, and I'm going to do it in Midland. They say, I need to know the equipment and I need to know the address, which means we had to buy a $30,000 startup kit for brewing and a $25,000 still. And we had to get a business and a lease and all everything and then go to the feds and say, okay, here's the serial number on this and this and this, and here's where it's going to be. So there's a good $70,000 investment just to say, okay, now and we figured they're not going to say no, we just have to make sure we do it their way. And that's acceptable. It's a, you're, you're making a um, controlled substance. It just is. Um, but I, so ultimately, me and the other partners, we all ponied up some of our own cash. Uh, and then I took my house, uh, which is paid off, uh, and I did a, a loan against 80% of the value of my house uh, to kick off the business. As of now, all other debts are paid off and the home is almost paid off. So we hope to be completely debt-free uh, by June, maybe July. I know you guys um, teach classes at Three um, Three Bridges. Can you talk more about the different classes that you guys do? Yeah, uh, the teaching a class on gin is kind of fun because not only do you learn about it's they're all two hours long. 
uh, they all are $35. They all require, if you, well, they're, if I set the date, then if one person shows up, it's go time. If, if 15 people show up, shows up, it's go time. Um, and we teach a class on bourbon. We're about to do a class on bitters. Um, and all those classes, especially the bourbon ones, a lot of fun. I've, I've made that a team building. So if somebody were to say, hey, we've got a, a team building party, we're doing it over here. You don't even have to have six or more people. You don't have to do it at the distillery. You still pay by the person, but I can do it at your place of business. Uh, if you, you would have to buy our bourbon and or have bourbon there to be honest it's the, it's the class but we do t if it's at our place we do taste our bourbon and if it's the gin class we actually make gin that night and you'll make gin and tonics from the gin you make that day um a couple times so we can try some things out and we learn about the history you know it's got some great scandals in uh in in alcohol in the, in the past so they're kind of fun we had a um, request for the recipe for b55 okay <laughs> so um, if you need the actual dashes and, and, and measurements, I don't know those off the top of my head. I will tell you, it is, it's easy to remember. I thought they should, I jokingly said they should name the drink after me because it's my initials. So there's John and there's jalapenos and those are, so what we do is we take a jalapeno, dice it up about that thin, and then we put it in sugar water and we boil it for a while, probably about an hour. So that, that takes some of the heat out of it, but it leaves a little bit and it makes them sweeter, a lot of fun. Um, so candied uh, jalapenos, and then it's gin, typical, probably two ounces of gin, an ounce and a half, two ounces of gin. And then there's mint, and then there is uh, lime, and cilantro. So John is jalapeno, so Charles is cilantro, Morgan is my mom's maiden name, which I use as my baptismal name, and then Levy is for lime. So there's my initials, and there's the drink. <laughs> Easy to remember. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, another question came in, do you lease the building to, um, to create your distillery or did you buy? We are, we, we are leasing it now. We just signed an extension for another three years beyond the, the we did a five year and then we just, uh, since we lost some, three of our years uh, waiting for the, just, this, we kind of just, we had two years left on our contract when we opened. So we did another three years and we are quietly talking that, hey, if you were to sell it, so we're first rights of refusal. We would like to buy it at some point. Um, I don't think uh, Rick, who is an amazing uh, owner, uh, I don't think he's ready yet, but we are, and I don't know if we're ready yet, but I know we are first in line if that became an option that we thought we wanted to do. I love the location. Being on Main Street, being in Midland on Main Street to me is like buying into the community. Uh, I was talking to a group the other day of my pros and you know, we were takers in the very beginning. We needed help, 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 and everybody did, and everybody was so generous. And now we're a position. A year later, we we need to step up and and give. We've been doing that all along, but now we will do more and more with nonprofits, um, making different groups feel special, welcome, and treat them on certain days to to bring awareness to our community. Um. We probably have time for maybe a few more questions. Oh, one just came in. Um, can you tell us about your partnerships with local food vendors so you can supply your guests with food? What is the part of the plan or did you come up with a crust? So we originally were gonna do everything and it was kind of, we were trying to figure out what's our brand, what's our identity? All we have is a really cool logo we all love, but we thought, all right, we're a brewery, a winery distiller with live music Fridays and Saturdays and food. And then we realized, okay, food's like four to six percent of our sales. We're losing money on it. Let's bail on that. People like pizza, so pizza bakers next to us. So we took all the pizza bakers menu and put it on our menu, and then put a printer on the other side. So if somebody ordered drinks, those drinks automatically went to our bar side. But if pizza was also on that, the pizza went over to his. He made it, and then the the customer could sit there, and we would go get their pizza and ice and hot and bring it to them in one bill, one transaction. Uh, that was a really nice kumbaya. We are looking to grow into having, making partnerships with uh, some caterers. And uh, I think it'd be important to do even more. Like I said, we, we've done a few things with Heather and Holly. We did some stuff with uh, cookie aviator, aviator cookies. We uh, certainly, as I mentioned, Grove Tea, uh, I, Macar Al -Mac O Macaron. We've, we, we try to partner as much as we can because 
I think the public likes it. I know we do. And I think you get that much more uniqueness. That's important. If you ever have an idea that you want to, hey, would you partner with us? Absolutely. Let me know what we can do. Awesome. Um, well, I think we're done with questions. And um, thank you so much, John, for joining us today. And thanks, everyone, oh, yeah, thank else you. for joining us. Uh, we'll send out a recording um, after the webinar along with our survey. And we hope to see you next month for our April webinar. I don't, I don't have to watch it, do I? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand seeing myself. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Nice meeting you. Take care. Hope to see you at the distillery someday.